101 famous poems. The Spires of Oxford by Winifred M. Letts Spoken and with commentary I saw the spires of Oxford as I was passing by, the gray spires of Oxford against the pearl-gray sky. My heart was with the Oxford men who went abroad to die. The years go fast in Oxford, the golden years and gay. The hoary colleges look down on careless boys at play, but when the bugles sounded war, they put their games away. They left the peaceful river, the cricket field, the quad, the shaven lawns of Oxford, to seek a bloody sod. They gave their merry youth away, for country and for God. God rest you, happy gentlemen, who laid your good lives down, who took the khaki and the gun instead of cap and gown. God bring you to a fairer place than even Oxford town. The Poet Winifred Mary Letts, born 1882, died in 1972, was an English-born novelist, playwright, and poet who lived most of her life in Ireland. She was born in Broughton in Greater Manchester to an English father and Irish mother and returned to Ireland as a girl with her mother after her father's death to live in Black Rock near Dublin. She trained as a masseuse and worked at army camps during World War I. She married a widower and after his death, spent the latter period of her life in Kalini, near Dublin. She began her career writing plays for the Abbey Theatre, then she turned to novels and children's books, and soon became successful, publishing over 20 plays, novels, and books of poetry in her lifetime. Her novel, Knock Maroon, about growing up in Dublin in her grandparents' home, is considered her best book, while The Spires of Oxford is her most famous poem. On service to your country. Next time you watch a war movie, keep an eye out for the scene where one soldier asks another what he did in civilian life. And one of them always replies something like, I was a teacher. That's a scene you will see in movies about the Second World War and Vietnam but not about wars after that. Vietnam was the last war America sent teachers to go fight. When the whole of England was threatened by the German Empire in the First and Second World Wars, the draft was reintroduced in that country, both times. But many men of all classes didn't need the draft. They volunteered to fight and die for their country, and die they did, in the trenches, in the air and on water, horribly, painfully, yet 
They knew what they were fighting for, and they did it of their own free will. The draftees and the volunteers came from all walks of life, from the working classes as well as the educated classes, and institutions like Oxford were emptied of their students because of it. The American military was also made up of all classes for a long time, but Vietnam changed that. The experience of Vietnam was not just about the war itself. It was about massive protests, riots, and terrorism at home. And all this anti-war violence was centered in the universities. It was the children of the educated classes, not the working classes, who didn't want to go to war for their country. One of the reasons Nixon abolished the draft in 1973 was to stop the protests, and it worked. When we went to war in Iraq and Afghanistan, the protests were small, ineffective, and half-hearted. The working classes are willing to serve their country because they have less to lose, while the educated classes, who enjoy so many more privileges, are not. I belong to the educated classes, and I certainly have never wanted to go to war or join the army, so I can't complain. But still, sometimes I wonder if this working-class-only military isn't the first step to dissolving the unity of our nation. They say that the fall of Rome came about partly when the military was given over to mercenaries who fought for money, not out of loyalty to the empire. The American military is still made up of civilian soldiers, but the educated classes are not among them. They enjoy the privileges of a powerful and rich country, but feel no obligation to participate in its protection. I worry that in the future they will continue to expect unlimited privileges while feeling no responsibility for the idea of American democracy at all. That's the kind of nation that crumbles when push comes to shove. Today, thanks largely to the writing and thinking of the educated classes, heroism in war is disparaged, and war itself is no longer considered heroic or justified, and that's a good thing. No war is always better than war. But I worry that we are also, perhaps unwittingly, discouraging any kind of loyalty and dedication to the country we all profit from and depend on. I hope we all, whatever class we belong to, have the honor and dedication to do what is necessary to protect the great rights and privileges we have, especially in times of peace, when we still have a chance to make a big difference without wasting precious lives. And I hope we will never become a country that lets one class do all the dirty work while the other classes profit from them without giving anything of their own.